Or can, so let's talk a little bit about um, your descent into addiction. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. So since I started, I started drinking when in high school, mm-hmm. and every time I would, it was from the very first time I blacked out. Like I didn't just like have a drink. Like my friends would be making like little mixed drinks, you know, and like sipping on a drink, and I'm just chugging out the bottle of vodka. You know, that's all I wanted to do, and I just didn't stop until I was blacked out and mm-hmm. didn't remember remember anything. And then when I moved to Florida, I start working in a strip club and there's drugs, you know, it's a bigger city. And then the second I snorted Coke for the first time, I was just in love. Yeah. And then from there. That stuff makes you feel like superhuman. Yeah. It helps you drink longer too. I was going to say, whenever I get super <laughs> sloppy, you do some lines and yeah. you could just, I would use them to go back and forth so I could just last forever. Yeah. Help, help with the blackout. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. I was just in love. And that was just what my life like revolved around for mm-hmm. so many years, you know, through while well, I lived in Florida. And then when I came out here, that was the first thing I wanted when I came out here. I was like, okay, how am I going to get it? Mm-hmm. And so I would just ask every girl mm-hmm. and I was doing it very heavily out here. And, you know, I was having a lot of like health scares, especially when I was living in Florida and just like, I wanted to stop for so many years, but I just, I like couldn't for some reason, like mm-hmm. I would have like little, like a month that I would like stop drinking and then I would relapse. And it was just really frustrating for years and years that going on. Were you trying to get sober on your own? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this, when I did get sober four and a half years ago, it was on my own. Mm -hmm. I never went to um, a rehab or a 12 step program. Mm -hmm. I actually just started going to 12 step programs maybe like two months ago. Mm. Cause I, I've had like four and four and a half years. I have four, about four and a half years now. And I just, I don't have any sober friends. Mm -hmm. And I started being like, Am I getting too comfortable? Because like I can do it on my own. Like I did do it on my own that mo- amount of time, but I just started getting like this worried feeling that I needed like a support team. Mm-hmm. So now I have like a sponsor and I go to a bunch of meetings and that I wish I would have done that from the start. It yeah. would have been so much easier. It's nice to find a community of people who understand what right. it's like because it's really difficult to explain addiction and alcoholism to somebody who doesn't have it because exactly. it just seems like, well, why can't you just stop? Which, like, seems rational thing yeah. to ask, right? Like, mm-hmm. why can't I just stop, you know? But um, it's it's a lot more complicated than that. Right. And I was never able to stop on my own. I tried. It was fucking impossible for me. So, like, kudos to you for actually being able to do that, you yeah. know, for a period of time. Yeah. I could not. And people at the meeting even ask me, that they'll be after the meeting, they'll be like, how did you do it on your own? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, now yeah. looking back, I don't I don't know. I just, like, really wanted it this time. And I wanted to be able to be healthy and have a family. And, you know, the gym really helped me because mm. that was, like, my new addiction. Yeah. So I kind of replaced my addiction. I have such I an was, addictive personality. Oh, I, girl, I totally <laughs> understand. Um, I am the same way. I actually find now that my addiction – I was going to ask you how your addiction manifests itself now because mm-hmm. it's always there. It's oh, something sure. that we're always fighting. And for me right now, it's totally food and really? especially sugar. Oh, yeah. I found – I had to talk – I was talking to my sponsor the other day. I found that, like, I've started – so one thing I used to always do was I always used to drink in the bath, right? Because okay. like that was a place that I could go and be like private. It was my me time. I had an excuse to lock the door. Totally. You know what I mean? And also too, like having, you know, it sounds sophisticated, like having a glass yeah. of wine and a bubble bath. <laughs> totally. And a book, look, like that yeah. sounds so sophisticated, right? So yeah. <laughs> in my head, that's what I'm thinking I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm going in there and I'm hiding the bottle of vodka under the sink and I'm doing <laughs> fucking <laughs> pounding vodka in the bathtub. Yeah. And then I'm like passing out in the bath and almost pulling a Whitney Houston and my boyfriend's Damn. breaking down the, down the door and like having oh to pull God. me out. I have it to me twice. Oh. So, um, so yeah. So the bathtub is like, it's almost kind of like a trigger place for me, I right. think. And I still take baths because like, it's a good way for me to unwind. I still really enjoy like reading a book and like disconnecting. Yeah. But I found recently that I've started like hiding. I just, I don't mean to, but like, I'll take like little like sugar snacks in there <laughs> and I find myself hiding it. Did you see what I posted on Twitter last week? Uh-uh. I posted a picture of me in the bath eating pie. <laughs> I ate pie in the bath the other day. I was eating apple pie in the bath by myself and I posted a picture on Twitter of yeah. it. That's so funny. I totally do it. And like, I'll find, like if my boyfriend like is coming upstairs, I find like just <laughs> not even thinking about it, me like hiding, Being sneaky. hiding it. And mm-hmm. it's just like, it's, it's so crazy how it's like manifesting itself in that way. And then I find myself, even if I'm not hungry, like. Eat, yeah, just, yeah, I can feel that because of like 
my eating disorders. Like I would obsess the food like that. So I kind of mm-hmm. went through that stuff too. It's funny. I think my um, addiction now is kind of like fan central, mm. <laughs> which is a good because I'm making so much. Yeah, money. I was gonna say that's actually kind of a good addiction to have yeah, because I like refresh the page. Where am I on like the little like top? Am I on the top yeah. ten right now? And yeah. then you know like how I'm refreshing the money, and I have like a goal every day of I want to hit this much amount of money, and like I want to hit this much for the whole month, mm-hmm. and like I try to hit those numbers. So this is like way better than you know doing drugs. But. Yeah. But it's still there. Obsessive, yeah. yeah, it's still that obsessive um, behavior. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we'll never conquer it. We just have to try to channel it into yeah. more healthy alternatives and try to manage it the best we can. I think I totally do like my house being clean as hell too. Mm. That's one thing I do. Like my house has to be super clean. Yeah. That's like another way I think I take out like my my weird little yeah. Things that I have to do. I it's I'm I clean too, but I'm not like as clean as I would like to be. Um, also, too, it doesn't help. My boyfriend leaves everything fucking everywhere. Oh, I know that. I know um, that but I mean, my house is my house is clean, but like it's not. You know. But sometimes, like, if especially if I'm stressed out, I'll like look around my house and I'll be like, "This place is a fucking <laughs> mess," exactly and I'll just like say. flip out, Same, you know, and be exactly. so angry. Same. I'm glad I'm not alone. No, I, I get like too. really mad, and then I start like angrily picking up stuff, or I'll, like angrily vacuum <laughs> yeah. and my boyfriend's like oh, I'm gonna go hide same, same. she's going crazy I know my husband's like if it's not like a, a museum you're all mad I'm like yes I want it clean yeah 